Hello biology students, Mrs. Smith here. This is the pre-lab information for your frog dissection. Remember this video as well as your amphibian notes and your textbook, pages 1086 and 1087, will help you take notes on the frog anatomy in addition to answering all of your pre-lab questions, getting you ready for the dissection. First, let's talk about classification. If you look on the bottom right hand side of your screen, you can see that the frog that we're going to be looking at is the northern leopard frog. It's in the animal kingdom. It is a chordate, so it has those four characteristics that all chordates have in common. Its class is amphibia and its order is anura, which remember includes both frogs and toads. Another classification piece that's missing from here is the subphyla, which isn't always included, but in this case it is vertebrata because the frog is a vertebrate. Let's look at our diagrams now. All right, so here is the internal anatomy of the frog. First of all, we can label that this is the anterior end. Remember that means towards the top or the head region. And then we have the posterior region, which is towards the bottom. We are looking at the ventral surface, which is the belly surface. The other side would be dorsal or the back side of the organism. One thing that we can look at when we're observing our frogs is look at the digits. If you look on the front, there are four digits and they're unwebbed. So this is going to be called the foreleg. Oops, spelled that wrong. Foreleg. And they have four digits. And the digits are unwebbed. One way that you can tell if your frog is male or female is to look at that digit, what you would call a thumb, but they don't have true thumbs. If that digit is enlarged, then it is a male and he will use that to grasp the female during mating. If it is a female frog, the digit will not be enlarged. Now this picture does not show the hind legs, but let's talk about them briefly. So your four legs have four digits and they're unwebbed. The hind legs are going to be larger They will have five webbed digits. And the reason they are webbed is to help the frog swim. It also helps with locomotion. All right, next let's look at the mouth of the frog. The way frogs eat is they capture their food and swallow it whole. So for example, they would capture an entire fly or an entire insect and then immediately push it down into their digestive system. They're not going to chew on it for a while like a human would. And they are going to be carnivores as adults. So whereas the young are going to be herbivores and feed on vegetation, once they reach the adult phase of their life and their reproductive cycle, uh, then they are going to be carnivorous animals. Cool thing about their mouth is that the tongue is attached to the front of their mouth. This allows the frog to flip its tongue out and allow it to extend further than if the tongue was attached to the back of the mouth like yours is. So some frogs in other species related to them can flip their tongues out pretty far in order to grasp food. It's also a little bit sticky. So when you get your frogs during the dissection, you'll get to see how the tongue is actually attached to the front of the mouth. All right, so our frog here captured an insect. It's going to swallow it whole. It's going to travel to the esophagus. Esophagus being the tube that leads from the mouth into the stomach. So the esophagus, the function of it is to bring the food from the mouth to the stomach. All right, next we will do the stomach. Go through the digestive organs here. And the stomach's purpose is for digestion. So it's going to release different enzymes to digest the food. After it goes through the stomach, it's going to go into the small intestines. And the small intestines are going to continue the digestive process. In addition, they're going to absorb nutrients into the frog's body so it can utilize the energy source there. After the small intestines, it's going to travel into the large intestines. The 
the large intestines are going to absorb water and then also pass out the indigestible waste. Where does the indigestible waste pass, pass out? Excuse me, it's going to pass out through the cloaca. So if you look at the very bottom, they have a cloaca. The cloaca is going to receive and re, uh, release urine, sperm, and digestive waste. So it's going to collect everything and uh, release it all at the same time. All right, let's look at some of the other organs that are involved in the digestive process and some other ones that you'll be finding in your frog. Let's look at the liver. The liver right here has several lobes to it. Its job is to produce urea and bile and also to make amino acids. It's a very important organ for the frog. Underneath that, we're going to have the gallbladder. The gallbladder's purpose is to store excess bile. So the liver is going to make the bile, the gallbladder is going to store the excess bile. And if you look for the gallbladder in your frog, it will be greenish uh, in color. Other important organs in the frog would include the pancreas. Pancreas function is to produce hormones and also enzymes for digestion. This tiny little ball right here is the spleen and the spleen is going to help destroy old red blood cells so it's going to work uh, with your circulatory system. This netting that we see right in this area is called the mesentery. The mesentery essentially is going to hold all the organs together. So you're, you're going to see uh, your small intestines kind of all entangled in this netting. The netting is the mesentery. And then inside that you'll find a tiny little dark ball and that is going to be the spleen. Another part that is hard to see on this diagram that we still want to discuss is the heart. Amphibians have a three-chambered heart. And when you find it in your frog, it's going to look approximately like this. And on this side is the left atrium. If you're thinking to yourself, wait, that's the right side, uh, you have to think about it if it was in the frog's body. It would be on the left side of the frog. So it is the left atrium. Here is the right atrium. Atria, in general, are used to collect the blood, and then they're going to have a single ventricle. The job of the ventricle is to pump the blood. So the atria receive blood, and the ventricle pumps the blood. Uh, the ventricle is going to pump the blood to the rest of the body. It's also going to take it to the lungs in order to get oxygen. Because the frog only has one ventricle, you're going to have some mixing of blood with oxygen and blood without oxygen, which is not as efficient as completely separating the two types of blood, which we will see in a four-chambered heart that you'll find in birds, mammals, and a couple of reptiles. All right, let's flip to the other frog diagrams. Going through some more of the internal anatomy that you'll be looking at. Uh, right here we've got the fat bodies. The fat bodies are going to look like greasy yellow fingers. Their job is to store fat and they're going to be attached to the anterior end of the kidney. So sometimes students have a hard time finding the kidney, but the fat bodies are really easy to find. So if you find the fat bodies, pay attention to the bottom area of it um, and it's going to be attached to that top part of the kidney. Also found on the kidney is going to be the adrenal gland. And so the adrenal gland will be attached, or not attached to it, but it will be a stripe found on the kidney. It's kind of a yellowish stripe, and its job is to produce hormones for the frog. Another structure you're going to see are the kidneys themselves, which remember are going to be attached to the fat body. That will be easier to find them. They're going to be dorsally located, so it's, they're almost going to look like they're on the two sides of the frog's spine. So they're going to be on the back side of it, um, kind of lower set. And the job of the kidneys are to filter blood for waste products. The ureter is next. The ureter is going to carry chemical waste from the kidneys to the urinary bladder. And then remember you also have your cloaca down at the bottom here, which is the common cavity to release uh, digestive waste and urine in addition to sperm if it is a male frog. All right, a couple other structures that we'll find just in our female frogs. We'll find the oviducts. The oviducts, one way you'll know that they're the oviducts is they're going to be coiled. They'll be uh, kind of cream colored and they'll be all coiled about. The ovaries are going to produce the eggs. And then the sacs that we see right here, the sacs are going to store the eggs until they're released. And they're going to go through external fertilization. So the female will release the eggs, the male will release the sperm, and they'll be fertilized outside of the female's body.
One last structure that we see only in the males are the testes here. The testes are yellowish and oval. And obviously if your frog is male, you're going to be looking for that structure. Again, how are you going to determine from the outside if it's male? Look for that last digit and see if it is enlarged. All right, one last thing to show you are a couple pictures of some neat things that our frogs are going to have. First one is called a tympanic membrane. Now this picture isn't of the species that we'll be dissecting, but it had a really great example of a tympanic membrane. If you look right here, oops, <laughs> that's showing the tympanic membrane. So they do not have an external ear structure, uh, but they still can hear. I also want to show you the nictitating membrane. Again, this is a tree frog, not the species we'll be dissecting, but it was a great picture to show the nictitating membrane. The nictitating membrane is that extra eyelid looking thing coming up from the bottom of the eye. It is clear, it sweeps upwards, so it goes from the bottom of the eye up, and it's a great adaptation to allow frogs to swim through the water and protect their eyes, but still be able to see. Whereas when you close your eyes underwater, you can't see anymore. A frog can close this uh, nictitating membrane and still be able to see what's going on. That concludes our session today.